Okay, welcome back to um, what's actually part two of the fidget spinner tutorial. Uh, I thought I'd follow up that first one with a uh, an explanation of how to create a three point spinner uh, that's actually created out of six points, and and I, hopefully that'll become clear in just a moment. Um, but there's some some techniques here that I think are important to understand. Uh, once again, if you if some of these uh, things that I'm covering rather quickly uh, don't make sense, or if you need more clarification on them, you can refer back to my earlier videos in this series that really go more in depth on some of the uh, strategies that I will sort of kind of take for granted today as I explain how to do this spinner. So, okay, so uh, I've set up for myself to get ready um, two cylinders, a whole cylinder and a solid cylinder, as well as a uh, block, uh, a whole block or a whole cube, um, and because we're going to actually be using these in, in the implementation. So um, what you'll notice, the first thing is uh, on a cylinder, any cylinder that you make, uh, especially in this version, newer, newer version of Tinkercad, you'll see the ability to adjust the slides, the, sorry, the sides. And so I'm going to bring this in here and I'm going to show you something. So by default, a cylinder has 20 sides. So you can see that here. And I actually take, a take the time to um, give it a little bit more roundness. And I do that by adjusting the sides to be 40 instead of 20. And you can, you can see here that the, the faces of the cylinder here are much more visible than the faces here. So, all right, so I've made, let me get rid of this sample one here. I've made a whole cylinder that is 22.5 uh, millimeters in diameter. And that is because the 3D printer which I use, which is the Lulzbot TAS-6, um, that 22.5 millimeter hole fits a 22 millimeter skateboard bearing really well, uh, such to the point where when we print it out, uh, it'll snap right in and hold hold snug without any glue. So I happen to, this just this is something I've just, you know, experienced over time for myself. So, uh, and I've created a second one at 30 millimeters and this becomes the outer part that actually gets printed so all right here we go um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to option drag so holding down my option key and dragging the piece out uh, i'm going to option drag a copy of each i'm going to bring it out this way and to ensure that i have these two aligned i'm going to select them both i'm going to go up to the align tool and i'm going to make sure the centers are aligned this way the bottom is aligned in terms of the vertical alignment. Okay, and now that I have this one, I'm going to hold my option shift keys, so shift and option, and I'm gonna drag that out. And what that's doing, just to reiterate, that is actually bringing out a copy, um, but it's bringing it out along the same plane. And I'm gonna do that one more time, option shift. And so now I have these three, um, what we'll call rings at this time, so. All right, um, now, uh, as you saw in the last video, you can actually take the outside ones. I'm gonna hold my shift key and select the outer rings, and I'm going to duplicate them, and I duplicate them with Command-D. I'm on a Macintosh, so Command-D. If you're on a Windows machine, it's Control-D. All right, and I'm gonna drag out a, that copy, 60 degrees, because I'm looking at six points right now, and 360 divided by six is 60. I'm going to let go of my mouse and I'm going to hit Command D again, and that creates my set of six. All right, at this point, I'm going to actually select all of these and I'm going to option drag. So I'm going to take them and I'm going to option shift drag actually these out and I'm going to drag them out um, out of the way at this point to uh, have materials that I'm going to use again and hopefully this will become apparent in a moment because right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this set, this set, and these two sets and I'm going to go back to here. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to make my initial piece. I'm going to bring out a, a cube. I'm going to give the cube a width of 30 millimeters which is the same as the diameter of the original holes, okay? So it's pretty good there. And I'm gonna stretch it out across this way. 
I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to, maybe it comes back a bit. This maybe comes back right here. There we go. And I'm going to shrink it down to the height of the rings, which is seven, by the way, which is the height of the skateboard bearing. All right. And now that I have that, I can select all of this and I will group it. And here's my first piece of uh, what will become my spinner. So now that I have this piece, I can go through the same process I just went through with that one, which is Command D, create a copy. I'm going to bring this out 60 degrees. And I'm going to hit Command D and do it again. OK, so now I have a spinner that is six points, which is great, um, but I want a three point spinner. And the reason I had to start with six is because I needed to rotate around a central axis. And had I done, had I tried this with only, you know, one one side, I, I wouldn't get the rotation that I needed. I had to have something around a central axis before I could rotate. So now that I've done that, I'm actually just going to eliminate three points. OK, the way I do that is I'm going to I've previously brought this um, larger uh, hole out. I'm going to option drag a copy out and I'm going to start eliminating half of each of these pieces. So so this is one piece here. I'm going to move with my mouse. This is one piece here. And this is one piece here. There's still three pieces. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut it in half. And I do that by clicking on the piece and then shift clicking on the hole and hitting group. Okay, so now I've gotten rid of half of it. And I didn't have to really be too precise, um, partly because I uh, some of this is going to be all plastic combined anyway. So I just took approximately half. I'm going to go get another copy. And this one I'm going to rotate a little bit this way like that. And I'm going to move it over here. And now I'm going to remove half of this object. So click on that, click on the hole, hit group. OK, and that leaves me with one other uh, point to remove. Um, I'll grab a copy again. I will rotate it like that, more or less. Make sure that I got everything covered. OK, and select this piece and the hole and hit group. OK, so there I have the makings of a three point spinner. But um, earlier I had pulled out this extra copy because I wanted to show you how we could actually add a little bit more detail to this. And so the way I'm going to add some more detail to this is I'm going to grab um, that center hole. That will help me for alignment purposes here in just a minute. And then I'm going to shift click and I'm going to get the outer rings that I had previously um, that I had previously uh, deleted. So I'm going to bring them over here. Shift, Option, Drag. Bring a copy over here. I'm going to line up my center hole with the other ones. That's great. So now I can take these three pieces. I'm going to click away, and then I'm going to click on these three, and I'm going to make them holes. And I'm going to select everything and group it. And now I'm left with a three point spinner that looks pretty cool. And these ridges here will help when spinning the spinner. Uh, they, they become really good groove placements for your finger when you're spinning. So, OK, that's all there is to it. I'm going to check the height, which is seven millimeters. This thing is ready to export and 3D print.